Hey everybody, it's Mike from 1614 Fitness. Thanks for tuning in. Today, I'm gonna to pose a question to you. What's success? Stay right there, we'll be right back with that answer. Hey everybody, as promised, it's me again, Mike from 1614 Fitness, with a question. What is success? To you at home, what is success? What makes something successful? And has it always been the same? Is it the same today as it was 15, 20 years ago? 15, 20 minutes ago? You know, I know for me, what I considered successful in the gym today is much different than it used to be. A dear friend of mine, Fran, we talk all the time. And he says to me, Mike, my body doesn't do what it should do or what I think it should do. I don't know how to handle it. What's going on with Fran is simple. He remembers what he used to do and how he used to look. And let's face it, Father Time is a guy who has never lost. And Franny's fighting a more of an uphill battle than the rest of us. He's got a condition that kind of messes with his blood. So he's really fighting some things. So what do we do? We've got to change our view of success. We work with an awful lot of college students, a lot of sports teams from lacrosse to basketball to volleyball. Their idea of success differs within their own arena. One of our teams is very, very close to the opportunity to win a championship. Another, our goal is to be in the playoffs, and that's our word. What's our battle cry? One word, playoffs. So those two teams in the very same university, their idea of success differs. One's fighting for a championship. One, the expectation is get into the playoffs. Then, obviously, the expectation and goal will be playoffs. So that being said, am I suggesting that we modify or, or change our goals? No, not at all. Back 100 years ago, it seems, when I was in corporate America, one of the big corporate words was fluid. Oh, this situation is fluid. Oh, that, that's a fluid situation. What's it mean? It means that things change all the time. It's just like water. It's always changing. And that's how life can be. Uh, my, uh, one of my clients, James, his goal is to be a natural bodybuilding champion, meaning he's not taking drugs. Oddly enough, the same individual, he was into the dance scene. His goal then was to be on national TV and dance, which he did. His goals have changed. His idea of success has very much changed. So the message I want to share with you really lies in some stories, stories of other people. See, I go to the gym every day. And like I said, my idea of success changed. If you've listened and watched some of the other episodes, you know that I have a crazy past. I was in the pro wrestling game for a long time. So my idea of being successful in the gym was making every effort to look like a superhero, doing tons of cardio, lifting gobs and gobs of heavy weights. Well, something happened to me around six, seven months ago that changed some of those things. I got hurt, and that injury led to me being sick. And that being sick led to a challenge I have in terms of using my right hand. So I no longer have the same goals and view success the same. When I used to lift weights and perform things, now I just simply want to improve the uh, functionality of this hand. One of the running jokes in the gym is I can't pick my hand or pick my nose with this hand because if I do, I'll poke my eye out. Well, the truth is it doesn't always work the way it's supposed to. But so there are lies. My idea of success today is very different than it used to be. It doesn't mean I'm cashing into my chips and goals, it just means they gotta change a little bit. I wanna tell you a story of three folks. Three folks that I see in the gym all the time that have a very different view of success than you or I or some of those people I, I mentioned earlier. James, the bodybuilder. Fran, the old school bodybuilder. My teams, their idea of success and goals are very different than some of the stories I'm gonna share with you. Chuck. Chuck is a partner of mine in this venture, a buddy of mine and also a personal training client. You would never know it, but Chuck wrestles with rheumatoid arthritis. And he jokingly refers to when he goes in to get treatment in the hospital, he goes in to get his oil changed. Well, he does that, and quite frankly, I didn't even know he did it until it came up in conversation. What Chuck does on a daily basis is different than what I gotta wrestle with. I don't have to go on for oil changes. I don't have to wrestle with the fact that my body doesn't feel well. My hand doesn't feel well, but that's just one small part of my body. Chuck wrestles with the entire body of his not feeling well, and when it push comes to shove, he's gotta go get his oil changed. He's gotta sit in a chair, drawing blood out, they do crazy magic stuff with it, stick it back in, and Chuck runs on his way. Good for him, he's tougher than I am. 
But there's an example of somebody having a success story that's very different than you and I, and he does it and goes under the radar and nobody knows it. He's not the only one. We have a lot of folks in 1614 that are a little bit different. We've shared stories about, we call them Dude Love, Austin. We tell stories about Paula, the, the, the wonder girl who we do chess with every Wednesday. These folks wrestle and deal with things that you and I don't. And I think that's impressive as heck. And I think we need to share those stories so those of us who may not feel like getting out of bed one day or may not feel like going to the gym and doing something or may not feel like running that mile, maybe they can be motivated just a little bit. There's another story, Anna. Anna has got, she's got injuries from here to there. And here's a wonderful story about Anna. Anna has so many challenges, I can't even begin to list them but she keeps on pursuing. And the crazy thing about Anna, she walks up to me at the gym and goes, hey, I just wanna check on you, see how you're doing. Again, I've got one bum hand. Anna's got more bum parts than, than you can shake a stick at. And I, I say that with all due respect, but she's asking about me for heaven's sakes. So here's the story about Anna. The doctors wanted her to get on one of those stationary bikes where they lock your feet in and you kinda of go up as high as you can and then go back down. And you go up as high as you can and you go back down. The purpose of that is trying to regain flexion in your knee and ankle. The higher the seat, the less challenging. The lower the seat, the more you're going to get flexion in the knee and the ankle. So not too long ago, that was her goal, just to get over that hump. And when I blew out my knee, I had to learn that, that same lesson. I, I remember sitting on the bike, this is 10, 15 years ago, and the therapist said, listen, I just want you to do one revolution. When you do that, man, that's gonna be fantastic. I remember thinking, are you kidding me? Again, that's when I was Mike Warmer, the pro wrestler. Doing one revolution on a stationary bike is, is a success? Well, come to find out it was. It took me weeks to get that all the way over. And I remember when I did, I wanted to jump up and down. Of course, I shouldn't jump up and down because I'd have fallen over like a turtle. But anyway, I remember being excited. Well, Anna was going through the same thing. She's like, I'm never gonna get it. I'm never gonna get it. I'm like, girl, it'll come. Sooner or later, it'll come. Seems like just a week ago or so, she got it. Literally today, before I arrived here, an hour ago, she's banging on my window, jumping up and down, going crazy. I thought she was picking on me for something. So I usher her in, she comes in and she goes, I just want you to know, I just did 12 miles. I go, 12 miles? What do you mean you did 12 miles? She goes, yeah, yeah, I just pedaled 12 miles. I go, 12 miles, that's fantastic. Again, this gal's got parts from here to there that don't work properly. A few weeks ago, she's worried about doing one revolution, and today she's jumping up and down because she did 12 miles? Good for you, Anna. And to make the story even cooler, after we get done celebrating, she kind of sits back and goes, yeah, but it took me almost an hour. I'm like, Anna, it would have taken me that long to drive, for God's sake, so good for you. So of course she's already got a new goal, it's 15. We work in round numbers at 16, 14, I guess. So she got her 10, she was all excited, she got her 12, all excited, and already she's moving on to 15. But where did that start? It started with that one revolution. Man, it's crazy, but I've been there, done that, and it is amazingly challenging. But her idea of success is a whole lot different than a lot of the other peoples in the gym. Peoples, I think grammatically, that was a disaster, but we'll let that slide. The folks at the gym have a very different view of success than she does. And her view of success is very different than it was a month ago, because all she wanted was one time around. Now, gosh knows how many times she's going around that track to get 12 miles, but good for you, Anna. There's a person who's got a very different view of success. Now, my other friend, this gal, we were talking. We'll call her Kim, that's her name. I'm not using anybody's last name because I don't want to upset them. I don't know what I'm supposed to say and what I'm not supposed to say. And typically, if there's a gray area, I go too far, so I'm just trying to like hedge my bet. But I see Kim in the gym all the time, and she's got, tons of challenges that I didn't know about, tons. And she always asks me again about my hand, how's my hand, and we joke about it and laugh about it. And, and oh, speaking of laughing, here's a story. My good friend, Barry, the other day at the gym, he knew, he, used, he got, came up with a question that the answer was four. Uh, I forget what the question was, but the answer was four. So he yells at the gym, hey, Mike, Mike, how many points or whatever did the Eagles win by? And of course the answer was four. So I go like this and my hand doesn't work very well, and it's got like three and a half, so he starts giggling to everybody that my hand really said three and, three and a half. So yeah, Barry, that was for you. But anyway, so Kim and I are talking, and she's asking me about my hand, and we're joking and having a good time, and then she starts to share some things, and I, I, I realized that she had a story to tell, 
And I had no idea. I see Kim in the gym four or five days a week. And she started sharing. And I could tell that the things that she was sharing wasn't something that she did all the time. I could tell that she wasn't necessarily comfortable with it, but at the same time, she felt it was the right thing to do. And I was honored that she felt comfortable enough and confident enough in our relationship to share those things. So we talked. Come to find out, again, she's asking me about my hand, one joint. Come to find out, rheumatoid arthritis began with her, I want to say in high school, if memory serves me correct. She was young. And throughout life, it worsened and worsened and worsened and worsened. And one of the things that I needed to decide about on my right wrist is, what do I do next? And the two options, or the biggest option I have right now, or I should say the most viable option medically, is to fuse it. So I shared with Kim, I said, the doctors want me to fuse my wrist. But to me, that scares me to death. I don't want to fuse it, because once you fuse it, man, game over, you're done. And although I don't have much extension and flexion in it now, it's better than I would have. So that's when she opened up and said, well, fusion isn't all that bad. And I'm thinking, how, what do you mean it's not that bad? And she says, well, I've got a bunch of bones and a bunch of joints in both of my feet that are fused. And I think maybe an ankle or one or both, but in, in your feet and your, your, your hands are made up of a, a ton of, of little joints. So I don't know what she got fused and what she didn't, but I know a lot of her ankle is fused. And I think in both of them. And I was stunned. I was stunned because I see her in the gym all the time, walking on treadmill, working out, just flat out getting after it. And I had no idea. And I said, Kim, I had no idea. And she kind of shook her head, yeah. And it was obvious it was special to her that people not know because she didn't want to, I don't know, create a stir. She didn't want to uh, have people have empathy or feel sorry for her. But I'm like, man, I had no idea. I see you on a treadmill walking up hills. And she just kind of nodded, shook her head. Yeah, I, I know. And then she looked at me and her one hand, it doesn't look like the other and it doesn't look like my left one. Uh, and it's much more stiff. It's much more rigid than my, than my right hand. And she says, yeah, this is something that's, that, that's challenging. And I'm like, Kim, I never saw it. I never noticed your hand. I never noticed you complain. I never noticed you have a bad day. I certainly never noticed your feet. And here's the thing about rheumatoid arthritis. Talk about a kick in the pants. Arthritis, and I've learned, so when they did x-rays of my hand, my hand has, is symptomatic of arthritis. And I, I guess it is arthritis, arthritic because of some of the damage that was done when I was sick. So I've learned, obviously, some things about arthritis. The key to arthritis is to keep moving. Because just like we talked about, the more you stop, the more rigid your body gets. And arthritis just tends to magnify that. It tends to expedite that whole process. So the thing you want to do least when you're fighting arthritis is to move. What you want to do is to just sit down and stay static and just be done. Well, ironically enough, that's the worst thing for you. What you need to do, what you have to do, is what's going to hurt you the most. you got to get up and move. So two of the people I've just mentioned are wrestling, fighting, beating rheumatoid arthritis, Chuck and Kim, because they're moving, they're not giving up. Their idea of success is different than mine. It may be different than yours. It's different than theirs was before they had these challenges. So Kim comes to the gym every single day and her feet and her hand and her joints hurt like a toothache and you'd never know. Chuck, who I train, goes about his business. Hey Chuck, listen, I wanna call you about this project. I want to do this and the other thing. Is that a good time? Yeah, yeah, that's actually a really good time because I'm going to be sitting there getting my oil changed. And I sometimes forget. I'm thinking he's getting his oil changed. And he's like, I'm like, oh, dude, is that bad? And he looks at me like, I got three heads. No, it's actually great. I'm, what else am I going to do? And we're moaning. We're bitching. That's one joint. These guys are wrestling with demons much bigger than I'm wrestling with. So think about that. Rheumatoid arthritis. What you need to do is move. But what hurts the most is to move. That is a kick in the pants. So you got a couple choices. I guess, really, really, I guess you really only have two. Do I move and, and deal with it? 
Because I guess as a rule of thumb, after you get up moving, you feel better. But again, that's easy for me to say because I don't really have it. Every day they come walking into that gym with the expectation that it's going to hurt. But every day they keep on doing it. So that's my thought for today. What is our view of success? And I encourage you to ask yourself, what is success? What is it that I want to do? And then go back in time. What was my view of success a month ago? What was my view of success five years ago? That might be a great step to you setting a new goal. And once you figure out that idea of success and what it is you want to do, I encourage you to go back and review our episode on goals. I encourage you to challenge yourself to find a goal, write it down, go through all the due diligence that I beg you to do in our earlier episode of goal setting. I think it's gonna help you a lot. So what is success? What is it? For me, it's getting up, it's moving, it's creating a gym that I hope other people feel safe. I hope it's inviting enough that people who hurt and people who don't feel comfortable still want to come in and work out, even when I know it's going to hurt them. So, when you don't feel like doing something, when I want to complain about a hand that doesn't work so well, when I want to moan about wanting to roll over, ask yourself, what would Chuck do? What would Kim do? What would Anna do? Anna would get on that bike and she'd ride. What would Dude Love do? Vince McMahon, please don't sue me. His name's Austin. Just kidding. Just kidding. What would Austin do? Well, Austin did leg press. He did it with me the other day. Pete and I helped him leg press. He did a great job. What would Paula do? Paula's in a wheelchair, and we lay her on her back, and she bench presses. What's your idea of success? Mine is different than theirs. Yours is different than mine. Come to 1614 and find your success. Listen, I'm all out of questions. I hope I got an answer or two left in me. The only thing I can say is I will see you at the gym.